Hey, welcome everybody. This is Brent English, president of Robust Tools, and today I'm here in Sam Angelo's really well-equipped shop. And Sam's one of our favorite dealers, and he's going to do yet another YouTube video for you. So please enjoy. Well, greetings once again. Welcome to my shop. Today I'm going to make a video dealing with tools, how to use those tools, some chucking methods, and some projects. So stay tuned. All right, now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this square blank down to round with a spindle roughing gouge. This is the most basic thing I think we all need to teach new turners or be aware of. Using a spindle roughing gouge on spindles only. It's not for cross grain. Uh, it's a safety issue. You can get into deep trouble and have a, a terrible accident. So. Spindle roughing gouge only on spindle work, which means that the, the spindle or that piece of wood runs parallel with the bedways. And there you can see the direction of the grain right here. And that is running parallel with the bedways. Let me find my spindle roughing gouge. All right, now let me show you my setup here. I've got this block of wood between centers. I've got a drive center here and a live center. I've got each end marked with an X and I've taken a scratch all and made a little indentation to line my block of wood up. Get that in there. Make sure I'm Clamp down securely here. <clears throat> Bring my tool rest up. One thing you should always do is make sure that this piece of wood is spinning freely and you're not hitting the tool rest. Alright, now here's my spindle roughing gouge. Okay, and what makes this tool a little bit dangerous is if you use this on cross grain work, this area right in here that goes into the handle, um, it's called a tang and it can be very weak and that can break, so you got to be careful. Make sure I'm locked down and my speed is right at a thousand RPM. Now, when you're doing this, when you're taking square corners down to round, it's a good idea to go in this direction off this side and on the other side go in the other direction off the piece of wood. Now, I'm not quite down to round in this area, in this area, pretty close. So, what I'm trying to do here is make a cut. Now, from the end camera here, you can see I've got my tool handle lowered, okay? And that's going to allow me to make a cut on this piece of wood, because I need to find my bevel right in here. Right here I'm rubbing the bevel and I'm not cutting. So I'm going to raise the tool handle and I can find my, my cutting edge. And that allows me to make a, a nice, and that allows me to make a nice clean cut. So I'm going to take the rest of this down to round and Another thing that we should look at here is one thing, the tool rest position. I'm going to go a little closer to my piece of wood and I'm going to cut downhill. Okay, and what's important here, and I'll stress this during the video, is 
going in a direction of grain that is being supported uh, by other wood fibers. Okay, it's kind of like my fingers here. If I go in this direction, you know, this <laughs> fiber is supported by this one, supported by that one. Anyway, that's... Uh... So I'm going downhill, I'm, I'm finding my bevel. Complete the other end. Now, in this video, I'm going to highlight a number of tools. I'm going to spend a little bit of time with uh, a spindle gouge and a skew chisel and some other tools. So I've got my blank turned down to round, and I'm going to just take this opportunity to do a, a little bit of detailing with a spindle gouge. I've got my speed turned up to about 1500 RPM. I did a few little basic cuts here. I did a chamfer on the end of this. I did initially a V cut, which is simply two chamfers uh, kind of put together. I've got a cove and I've got a bead. All right, now my first project, I'm gonna make a bud vase or a weed pot. And that simply means that this particular item right up here is not going to be hollowed out. I'll drill a hole in there, uh, maybe for a glass tube or something. But what I'm gonna do, what I'm gonna do and feature in this video is duplicating this particular shape with the dimensions in this book. This is a book by Jim Rogers, California. And it's got all the dimensions here. So I'm gonna use, um, calipers and dividers and different things to uh, mark the high point right here, the base and the, uh, the rim up here on the top of this vessel. All right, now put some pictures up as we go along here. Now the blank I've got is a little bit extra long and I can uh, use that for some waste at either end. I think probably what I'll do is eventually put this into a a scroll chuck. I'm not sure at this point is I'm going to mark the overall length six and three quarter inches right there. There and here. So what I like to do when I'm making some sort of project like this, I know the dimensions, I'm taking a parting tool and I'm going to uh, mark this end and this end. So the next thing I'm going to do is mark the dimensions, the high point. I think what I'll do is I'll make this the, the top of the vessel. This will be the base. All right, now let me, uh, let me mark these. Okay, again, this is going to be the base. This will be the, the top with the opening. This area right here is the widest point on the lower part of the vessel. This is a, a big cove right in here. 
The next thing I'll need to do is just part down, uh, especially in this area, and determine the diameter here. So I'll do that next. Now, this area right in here is going to be an inch and a quarter in diameter. I've got that marked on these dividers, and I've given myself a little bit more room, like a, oh, an eighth of an inch, and I can work my way down to that later on. So I'm gonna just take a parting tool and go down to that diameter. Okay, now I don't often duplicate something from a pattern like this, but I think it's a good activity, a good exercise to do. So I've got the inside right here uh, turned down to the proper diameter. This is gonna be the bottom of that cove. This is gonna be the high point on the base. So maybe the next step would be to establish the uh, diameter of the actual base right down here. So I'm gonna mark that on my divider, or these calipers. And that is an inch and a half right down here. Now I think what I'll do is I'll use a skew chisel to do this. I can take off quite a bit of wood right down in here and I'm going to just use a very simple peeling cut to do that. I'm just a little bit big, but I can take that down later. Now, this is going to be the base right in here, level with this, this flat surface. So, um, I'm going to turn this area here down to that dimension and then this area down to the diameter of the bottom of that cove. And I'll use a spindle gouge for that. All right, now there's one last dimension I need to go down to, and that's the very top of my, of my vase, right in here. And I got that marked on my, my calipers. This is just gonna be waste at the top of my vessel. Here's the dimension I need, and I'm right there, right at that, that rim right there. So that's actually the widest point on my, my base. Okay, so now I've got everything established. I can just do some turning and make my cove here and the bead. Yeah. Now I've got the camera moved to a different location and what I want you to look at is the position of my tool. And I often make the comment that you, you turn a bead or a cove or a certain profile not necessarily with the cutting edge but with the back of the tool. So if I make a nice even curve or arc with the end of my tool handle, it's going to uh, make a corresponding cut up here. All right, well, let me just show you. Okay, now you may have noticed that I not only uh, swung my tool handle around this way, but as I got into a diameter that was a little bit smaller, I also raised my handle. So it's a matter of swinging it and raising that handle. Okay, my lathe speed is right at 1500 RPM.
All right, now I have my vessel turned down pretty much to the dimensions on the drawing. I'm going to take a negative rake scraper and clean this area up. I don't have any uh, torn grain and that's kind of my rule. Uh, before I go to any kind of a scraper, I want to make sure that there's no torn grain. So I have uh, some terrible tool marks down here and uh, it's a little bit rough throughout. So I'm going to just take this negative rake scraper kind of clean this up. I've got a, a good burr on the, the top of the cutting edge. I'm getting a little vibration, so I'm going to make sure everything is locked down. Okay, now even though I'm scraping, I'm also going from the high point down to the valley. And that way I'm cutting into supported wood. And I'm really probably cutting more than I'm scraping because I have that burr on the top of my vessel. So I'm, I'm changing um, the end of my scraper. And the profile there will allow me to work on this area right here. So very gently, clean up those tool marks. All right, now I'm at a point where very happy with that surface. I can take some sandpaper and clean that up. I've got just some remnants of tool marks in there. No torn grain. I'm going to put this into a, a scroll chuck and drill out the top of this and complete the top and the bottom of my vessel. All right, now as I uh, move along with this video, let me show you where I'm at here. I've drilled out the center of my vase. 11 16 drill bit. Got this little glass tube from Craft Supplies and it's a perfect fit. All right. It's about that long in, into the uh, vase. Now, I promised I was going to show you some chucking methods. This is pretty simple. Many of you have a, a scroll chuck of some sort. So I'm going to put this back in here and I'm going to just part that off and my uh, weed pot bud base will be completed. Then we're going to move on. I'm going to show you a couple other chucking methods. One is going to be um, a glue block and I'm going to make an egg out of a piece of pink ivory. So you can look at the timestamps below to see exactly when I turn that. And you can just click on that if you want to go right to the egg. All right, now you have to be really careful with that last little bit that you don't uh, rip out the wood fibers and make a hole in the bottom of your of your piece. Yeah, very good. Now I'm very happy with my weed pot. I think it came out very well and the uh, goal for that was to simply duplicate uh, a vessel according to the dimensions provided. So now I'm going to make an egg out of uh, some pink ivory and I'm going to use a little bit different chucking method and I think this is a good way to go. I've got an aluminum faceplate uh, firmly screwed into this waste block, and the waste block is cross grain. I think that's important. Now, the egg blank is an end grain piece of wood. So, what I've done here is I've added a, a tenon to make a mortise and tenon joint and glue that in. That's going to add a little bit more gluing surface and a little bit more security. For doing that. 
end grain does not glue all that well. So here I'm just fine tuning this and I want a, a very nice slip fit that'll just kind of hold in there right there. And I'll add some glue and we'll move on and uh, turn an egg. And I'm going to turn the egg with a skew chisel. Uh, that's pretty risky, but I do a pretty good job. Now I do get one pretty nice catch that I'll slow the film down. You can watch that. And uh, I thought about taking it out, but you know, that, that's pretty difficult. This pink ivory is fairly hard wood. And uh, overall, I think I did pretty well. So anyway... Getting her all set up, I'm going to bring my tail center up as a clamp and wait for the glue to dry and we'll turn an egg out of this beautiful piece of pink ivory. Alright, it is time to make an egg. I've got my pink ivory blank glued into this waste block here. And I'm going to take a pencil and I'm going to mark the overall dimensions of my, my egg. All right, now on this end, I'm going to take into account any damage from my live center. So I've got a little bit of waste right here. I don't want to get too close to my glue joint right here. So this will be the other end of my egg. And I think what I'll do is I'll make this the pointy end and this the, the blunt end. And I'm going to use a skew chisel. I'm all sharpened up and I keep my skew chisels about... Uh, 30 degrees, 15 degrees and 15 degrees for a 30 degree included angle. All right, I'm turning my lathe right at 1800 RPM. Now I've taken a parting tool and just marked the ends here. So I'll turn down to that. I'm going to start working on the pointy part of my egg. And then eventually I'll take the, uh, the tail center away. Just clean up the surface a little bit on that. Now, I'm working on the pointy end right here, and I've just about got that uh, profiled to where I want it. I have a pencil mark right here that's going to be maybe the wide point of my egg. So I'm going to work on this just a little bit more, and I'm going to take uh, a little bit off this end before I uh, part this pointy end off. Okay, I'm going to move my tool rest and start working on the other end of my egg.
All right, I'm just going to make one more cut in here and kind of level this off. It's still a little bit fat right here. Okay, now one thing I need to do here before I go too far is do some sanding and apply a little finish on this. I still have my pencil line mark right here, which is about the widest diameter. And before I get too crazy and take that down right there, I think I will sand that, what I can reach, and put a little bit of finish on it. All right, we are getting down to the end of my egg, finally. And I only had one fairly major catch with that. So I got some finish on this. Uh, I started with uh, Axe Abrasive Paste. Thanks for watching this video. I'm going to end it here. I'm going to take the time and part this off and I'll show you that. So thank you for watching and I'll talk to you next time. All right, I've got a finished coat actually of shellac on there. I've got as much of my egg sanded and finished as I can reach. I have maybe an eighth of an inch right in there to part off, and I'm just taking a, a narrow parting tool to do that. So just a little sanding on that and we'll finish the end. That's a beautiful egg. Nothing like that pink ivory. It's beautiful wood.